Coming up on Twerk, we've got Brittany Hilton, Paul Kriegler, Daniel Hyatt, Tommy the Hacker, Dave Colasar, Russ Munchang, Greg Dahl, John Lackness, Jeff Williams, and Chris Tobin, all live from NAB Radio Show 2019 in Dallas on Twerk. This Week in Radio Tech is brought to you by Broadcasters General Store with outstanding service, savings, and support online at bgs.cc. By the Ruby Console from Lavo. See Lavo in your future at lavo.com slash twerk. By Angry Audio. Audio problems disappear when you get angry at angryaudio.com. And by the CalRec Type R console system. Type R is a brand new, modular, expandable IP-based radio system from CalRec Audio. Hey, welcome into This Week in Radio Tech, the show where we talk about everything from uh, from the microphone to the booth at the at the NAB radio show. I'm Kirk Harnack, along with uh, Chris Tobin, and we'll introduce Chris in just a second as the co-host, you know, the, the guy who's always got the voice of reason on the show. Uh, but since they're standing right here, let me introduce you to my friends. First of all, we'll go ladies first, Brittany Hilton. Hi, Brittany. Hi. So uh, I should say we are in the booth of Broadcasters General Store, and they very graciously allowed us to plug in and use their power and uh, get some equipment off their booth and put my stuff here uh, and and broadcast the last hour of uh, of the NAB show with uh, This Week in Radio Tech. So now, Brittany. Uh, happy to have you. Uh, well, thank you. Uh, tell me about uh, your role at Broadcaster General Store. You're kind of new here, aren't you? Yes, just the last uh, couple of months. Um, I work in sales marketing. Mm -hmm. uh, sales, marketing, conferences, you name it, I do it. <laughs> well, good. And and you've been in broadcasting yourself for quite a while. Yes, yeah, since about 2012. I, well, now I heard that you were involved in things like installing transmitters. Yes, uh, I did work on the KET uh, transmitter install for the UAXT Gates Air transmitters. I did install 13 of them for KET wow. over the summertime. Mm -hmm. So you yeah, do lots have... Lots of lead hand cuts Ugh. everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, I heard you were, you were cutting uh, RF pipe. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, that, you know, circle. That, yeah. Well, yeah. That, that and that'll cut you up, won't it? Yes. Yes. Wow. Ripping the barbs and you know polishing out and yeah, well, soldering the interconnectors and plumbing, all that kind of stuff. You also have um, uh, experience with a company that we've had as a guest on the show, and that's Double Radius. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What What you do for them? I did the Cambium Link Planning as well okay. as SAF. So I did any of their licensed and unlicensed gear. So you can plan a, a microwave link. I can. Awesome. Awesome. I should have talked to you before I built mine. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can help you build another one. <laughs> right. We're also here with Paul Kriegler, my colleague from the Telos Alliance. Hey, Paul, welcome in. Hey, good to see you, Kirk. Thanks. Good, good to see you. I hear you got a lot of things going on in your life. We have a lot of things. I'm getting married on the 21st. That's what I was talking yes. about, yeah. Getting married. Awesome. She already gave me the ring, too. <laughs> I thought, that's great. The ring exchange has already happened. Wow. Well, it's just not quite legal yet. Uh, we'll be soon. It, it's in heart. But yeah. not. So uh, during the show, we're going to talk to you a little bit about audio processing and what, where, where things are happening in audio processing. And, cool. And also, what you, we're in your home state, aren't we? Uh, yeah. Your well, well, Austin, Texas is my home state. If you understand <laughs> what I'm saying. <laughs> Uh, Chris Tobin is with us as well. Chris from some undisclosed location in New York City. Chris, welcome in. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing well, thank you. Yes, I'm in my friend's uh, home office in New York City, so planning out some RF projects. So it's it's a good time. Good time. Is there a time when you're not planning or actually doing? I mean, you're, you're a busy guy. Uh, you know, I'll tell you a story real quick. When I worked at yeah. another radio station many, many years ago, I got a chance to uh, sit in on an interview with a neurosurgeon who happened to also be uh, a golf player, pilot, and what was he doing? He was doing something else, about three other things while doing neuro and also surgeries for you know neurology. And the interviewer asked him, goes, how do you how do you do all these things and still be a neurosurgeon? He goes, Well, the one thing you have to remember is the brain needs to be refreshed with new things, new images, and keep it busy in order for you to stay, you know, competent, I guess, or young, whatever. And I thought about it, I was like, Well, you know what? When I started researching how people who've stayed young or feel good or stay healthy, nine times out of ten, they're very active, active in the sense of reading, moving things around, doing stuff, not just one thing, but many things. So I figure why not? My passion is RF is along with some other photography uh, things. So I do a lot of that. So it seems to be working. At least I'm told I still look the same as I did in high school. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, I didn't know you in high school, so you've always looked the same to me. I got pictures of you back to the ABC radio network in New York, and I swear you don't look any different. So there you go. Well, then we'll That'd use be a that. long time there, ago. My days at, at ABC Master Control. Yes, that's correct. 
<laughs> now, you're hooked up to the Internet there at your friend's apartment in New York City. you got a great connection. I mean, you're probably just down the street from some huge, you know, AT&T or Verizon point of presence or big, you know, switch thing. But here I am in the, I won't say the bowels of the hotel, but we we definitely are, you know, there's a lot of pancreas. The pancreas of the hotel. Thank you. We're at the right, atrium. <laughs> we're at the Hilton Anatole Hotel in Dallas, Texas, where the NAB radio show has uh, has been held before. And I got to tell you, we are connected to you via, and I wish I could show it. I thought I was being so clever putting a short cable on this device. And I can't, you can, come you can to almost me. Come see to it. Me. Oh, you know, come I can lift up the lap. Let's see if I. Oh, oh Chris has one. There you go. go. Oh. Are you using that, or is that for show right now, Chris? This is for show. This is strictly for show. Okay. All right. And the, well, and the, I am the using... connector SMA connection is my <laughs> making. It does not come with Max Connect. I am using the same box that Chris is. It's the Max Connect, um, and I, I need to come up with a phrase for this. I'm, uh, it's the Max Connect wireless modem, but it's not the hardware that makes the difference. Although when you subscribe to the service, you get the hardware. Uh, it is a Basically, it's your it's it's a phone company that has high priority. It's a wireless carrier that uh, you, you you pay the Max Connect people for it, and you get priority. So here we are in a convention hall full of people, and I've been checking this thing all day long. Get the exact right throughput all day long. As far as I know, every packet's getting through, and uh, I'm just so impressed with this technology. If you go out and do remotes, you know that it's hit or miss. Hey, it may work great at the beginning of the football game or the parade or whatever, but when it comes to halftime and, you know, two-thirds of the people in the stands pull out their cell phones and start looking at their Facebook or whatever, uh, you know, your data can just go away. And that's happened to me several times. And there are other solutions on the market to do it. You have a couple carriers and some bonding and things like that, and those can work too. But this, I think, is the way to do it. Max Connect, you actually get a priority for your data that is really one step below first responders. How about that? And that means you have priority out of all over all those people in the stands, in the stadium, at the fair, uh, in the hotel, wherever you are, you have priority over just about everybody. So it's just awesome. So we're getting, we, it, it, we get uh, about eight megabits up and down on this connection and it's consistent. In other words, it's not the fastest, but you know what? Every packet gets through. And I, I say that and I hope it looks great. So, Thank you, Chris, uh, for showing that off. Max Connect, uh, go to maxconnectwireless.com. We'll have the uh, email or the uh, website in the show notes. Thanks a lot to Josh Bone for uh, providing this connectivity today. All right, show time. Uh, this 2019 radio show, let me give you an impression and see what you guys think about, about this. We're all used to the NAB show in the spring, or at least I am. I've gone to 30 of 31 of them now. And it always seems like so much pressure. Pressure, pressure, pressure. There's always people standing in line. Hey, Daniel, always people standing in line to see you. And it's it's just, it's mayhem. Uh, I work for the folks at the Telos Alliance, and we're always busy. Oh, my goodness. This radio show, it's been full of people. We've had plenty of people come by the booth of uh, all these different booths that are here, and yet it feels comfortable. You feel like you're dealing with and working with people who you've known for years, and you get to have conversations and talk to them. Come on in, Daniel. <laughs> pa we're going to talk later. So my impression has been that this is like a breath of fresh air. This is a convention that I want to go to because I see my friends and, and have good conversations. Brittany, what do you think about that? I agree. I've seen people here that I haven't seen since 2012, or I've seen people that I haven't seen in two months. And like you, get to see you. Yeah, yeah. But we, we can have quality conversations. Yeah, it's as not well as packed. It's not something where you can't sit there and have like a five-minute conversation or a 10-minute conversation and feel like you're rushed to get to the next person. You can yeah. actually sit down, talk about your plans, your strategies, your studio equipment, and whatever your needs are so we can fully facilitate them. We'll look at some of the specific here in a few minutes, but Daniel Hyatt's been able to join us. Hey, Daniel, hey, welcome hey, in. How, how you doing, Kurt? Uh, it's good, good to see you. you. I'm sorry that we ha I had to leave lunch. Did you ever get your burger? I got my burger. I sent it back three times. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> but they got it right fine. And, you know, I was the one that wanted everything on the burger. Oh, but you, I got it. Yeah. And it only cost me $35. Oh, man. Well, it's good to see you. So did you drive or fly down here? I flew out. Okay. Yeah, I've been driving a lot. Yeah, I've been driving all over the place. I bought a new vehicle in May, and I have 22,000 miles on it now. Wow. Okay. That is a lot, yeah, a lot of driving. You always are uh, fresh with good engineering ideas and things to do. And we're going to take a quick break right here and hear from our friends at, uh, I hope it's Vox Pro. Is, I hope that's the, the spot we've got teed up right now. We're going to hear from Vox Pro because I know Daniel's probably got an idea or two about Vox Pro and why it's important. So let's roll it. We'll be right back. 
Yo, what's up? Live from NAB 2018. Hey, it's Caden. Uh, you need to check out Wheatstone and Vox Pro 7.1. The upgrades are amazing. If you're a jock, if you're a talent, producer, whatever, a, a morning show, everyone knows Vox Pro, everyone uses Vox Pro, everyone loves Vox Pro, but now the features for this year, 2018, on 7.1 are amazing. If you're using, uh, using version 4.5.6 and you go to 7, this is exactly what you're missing right here. The features are a game changer. It's gonna cut down your editing time by like 80% depending on what you use Vox Pro for. And with uh, version 7.1, introducing unlimited practic button bars right here, hotkeys right here. I'm gonna show you coming out of a song. Bad things, it's a lot of bad things that they wish and wish and wish and wish. So you're coming out of your song? Yeah. Start your next song right here. It's basically an entire production room right on Vox Pro. So it's the Vox Pro we know and love with a ton more features. And now uh, this is the ultimate game changer right here, effect macros. So instead of hitting your effects button bar and going up here using your mouse for every effect, you do it right here with one click of the mouse and you're gonna cut down your editing time by about 80% without even touching this new sexy black controller. Check it out right here, Wheatstone Vox Pro 7.1 at NAB in Vegas 2018. Thanks a lot to uh, the folks at Vox Pro and Broadcaster General Store. You can get Vox Pro from BGS at bgs.cc. And Daniel, you know, I take care of so many small-time radio stations. Sure. I, I talk to the big guys, New York, L.A., everywhere in between, Paris, Bangladesh, wherever, but uh, you've dealt with Vox Pro and uh, the talent that insists on using it. What can you tell us about Vox Pro? You know, Vox Pro is one of those industry standards, if you will. Every studio has it. You go to a small town, they've got to have Vox Pro. You go to the big city, they've got to have Vox Pro. And, you know, the last couple of years, Vox Pro has really acquired some, some neat add-ons. They now have a hot button key, which I never have enough hot keys in a studio. Oh, okay. All so. Right. There's a hot button key. Here's one for small markets. Now, I deal with a lot of small markets, too. And if you're anywhere close to the south, you do a lot of sports broadcasting. You do a lot of football and basketball. Yeah. Well, here's one thing that makes you sound like the big guys is Vox Pro allows you to run a continuous recording in the background. Just run this recording, and it records everything that's going on. Simultaneously, you can go back and you can edit those highlight clips. So now... I, I always think back, there's this wonderful, wonderful lady uh, at a small station, KBLJ in La Hunta, Colorado, that I grew up around. Her name is Dolores. And Dolores is probably about 79 now, but she runs all the sports games. And Dolores just tackles that box pro. She goes in, she records it, <laughs> she edits it. Chops it she, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and she goes back to the announcers, and they've got all their highlights. And I'll tell you, those small stations, sometimes it's like, oh, I don't know if I really need a telephone editor. But that one feature alone makes you, takes you from that small-time radio market uh, to that big time sound yeah like espn radio there oh, you yeah. go yeah hey we got uh, tommy the hacker here hey tommy how you doing good afternoon how well, are you welcome in yeah you guys want a do-si-do -si -do or uh, uh, uh oh, we, uh, do a little dance here. there, there we, we go, go. There. Right. Okay. do a little dance make a little love get down the night <laughs> so uh, where are you at uh, on the air i am in corpus christi on a top 40 station uh just been there for we're hitting a year now now you, you tommy the hacker is it and what does the hacker mean in this case? Well, it was pretty much a uh, funny story behind that that happened years ago that I probably don't want to share the story okay. about. Okay. But uh, it was a program director that yeah. actually gave me that name. I thought it was pretty cool. And uh, I he hacked the it. station. I'll tell you this. <laughs> yes. Uh, the, the the brief story is it, this is a promotion when the internet was just getting much larger wasn't as big so the whole thing was the promotion was leading up to somebody hacked the radio station and uh, they had a whole preemptive thing and it turned out to be the hacker <laughs> like a little pirate radio station so tommy it's, it's step up a little bit this yes. is your this is your first radio show huh uh yes it is it is and uh I, i'm excited every morning to go to work we start at 6 a.m but we get there about 4 30 to start doing show prep and uh, preparing for the show because we'll prep it the day before, but you never know what happens overnight. You know, last minute news pops up and, you know, or something happens to us and we go in and end up in using it as a topic on the show and because people relate to it. So I came here early uh, a Tuesday here. They had this tech Tuesday. So all the engineers got together and we had several sessions for mostly for engineers, but I'm guessing you're not an engineer. You're on the air. I'm yeah? on the air. Yes. And 100%. so, so did you get to go to any of the sessions Wednesday or Thursday? No, I actually uh, left my show this morning an <laughs> okay. hour early. Oh gosh. They have no management has no clue. I'm here. I hope they're <laughs> now not they watching. Do. Yeah, I hope they're not watching. <laughs> Uh, I snuck out, caught a air, uh, you know, a flight here to Dallas. Yeah, and fly out after this is all done. But I thought this was a good opportunity for me to come and 
absorb and, and network, you know, and I've learned a lot, you know, being on air, you know, you have to learn all of the other departments, not just programming. You got to know about engineering and, you know, sales and, and production. Hey, this brings up a, a good question. Uh, my, uh, my co-host Chris and I have talked about this or asked a lot of people about this as a talent. When something's not right or you'd like something changed technically, like, hey, if only I had this, I could do this better. Uh, how is your relationship with the engineer to get that done? I'm um, one phone call away. Really? And sometimes one text away. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, these days, you know, the engineer is kind of like the backbone of the radio station. You know, if your signal call, if your signal's not broadcasting, um, I mean, he, he is the backbone. So if we have any minor issues or major issues we get a text or a callback, you know, uh, rapidly. So you've got a good relationship with your engineer. Definitely. Okay. Well, that, that's good to hear. Cool. cool. Uh, who's your engineer? Can you say? This guy right here. Oh, well, I, I really had no idea. Hey, I'm everywhere. <laughs> he, I'm does, everywhere. he does everything. Corpus Christi. Wow. Yeah, I'm all over. Danger Dan. Couldn't believe it. I didn't get back to Corpus Christi. I was in Corpus Christi when I was like literally six years old. And all I remember is I got stung by a man of war out on the beach. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, yes. it was bad. Yes. <laughs> I got stung it by a jellyfish just uh, a few weeks ago at the beach. Oh wow! Did wow. you uh, did you do the traditional treatment? I won't get into that. Uh, <laughs> I didn't know about no. that. Then. I've heard about it. I thought it was just something <laughs> fake, but no, I did not do that. No, I was pouring apple juice on here. <laughs> no, oh, okay, I heard something sparkling else. water. Sparkling water, yeah, <laughs> one of the yeah. two, something like something like that. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much for having me on. I appreciate it. Great to meet you. I hope you hope to see you again. You know, next year we're in uh, Nashville. Can you take I the day heard. off and go to Nashville? Yes, I, I will definitely take the three days off because it's a three day event, right? Yeah, yeah, I yeah. think it is. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you very much. Tommy, thanks, thanks to me. Good to meet you. Come on, come on back in here, Daniel. All right. So, uh, are you are you playing hooky today too, or is this part of your job to be here? No, I you know I I'm supposed to be here. Okay. If I'm not here, everybody asks. You know, I, I tried to make TAB. It was it was a, a deal where I had a couple of days to hop across. I ended up had a transmitter that had a problem. And so I kept pushing my flight back. Yeah. You know, Southwest is really good about moving flights. Yeah. So yeah. I kept pushing the flight back and finally got to the 10 o'clock flight and said, okay, I'm not going to make it. <laughs> and I had to skip over and I went straight to another state the next day. But I thought, uh, you know, I'd come down here to Texas and enjoy this conference. So engineers, well, you've been on our show before, and engineers who know you know that you're the kind of engineer absorbs wherever you go. You're always learning, always absorbing. And then uh, you also have some pretty strong opinions. Sure. So I think it's interesting at uh, those times when maybe, and I don't know if you're the kind of guy that changes your opinion easily or set in your ways. I really don't know. But when you come to an event like this, uh, do you learn anything? What's what's your hot button these days? You know, what What's on your horizon as an engineer? So I think technology is starting to evolve more and more. And we're seeing a lot of cool product development, especially in the virtualization area. We're seeing um, even uh, just saw BDI remote control over here. Which is, that's new. And, you know, it's something that really, you know, remote control is kind of like, oh, you have your go-to and you put it in and you're yeah. happy with it. Yeah. And now I'm starting to see things like that. Um, I I would say you have to keep your, your mind open and you also have to um, explore and try to research on your own, maybe outside of just what vendors are offering. Right. There's a lot of great things that vendors offer uh, and it's right there in front of you and we all use those every day. But sometimes, and I'll give you an example is uh, somebody asked me earlier today, Hey, what's, what's the best mic processor out there? I said, well, you know, there's a lot of them. I just kind of got yeah. their opinion. And well, what do you use? I said, oh, Soundcraft UI 16. What's that? Huh. I said it's a digital huh. sound mixer. I used to, you know, mix some audio down at a wedding. But it's a rack mount device. It's uh -huh. got inputs and outputs on it, and it's got all the DBX processing built in. So it's like having a stack of DBX mic processors. Really? Okay. Okay. And I've got a couple in studios that have been running for several years now. It's got a GUI built in. And for that particular purpose, those are production rooms. You know, I always worry power supply may, might not be built as robust as a 24-7 style broadcast piece of equipment. Right. But right. in the same token, that was able to save a little bit bit of budget and it helped me get somewhere so i try to keep my mind open to even things like that and then you know there's other cases where it's okay i'm building something that's in a major market this thing can't go down you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna kind of lean to the old faithful yeah over yeah, here yeah, yeah. And yeah. Get something else so so yeah. what was that soundcraft model number again Remember? uh that's a ui 16 ui 16 is that meant to be the engine for a console or is it just mic processors no uh what's happened is in the live sound industry uh, originally, people had the big analog boards, right? right. <laughs> kind of like the broadcast industry. Yeah, and then they went to kind of a digital board, much like a yeah. an X thirty two from Behringer, right? Sure. And now companies like Behringer, Personas, Soundcraft, they've 
eliminated the surface. Yeah. And it's simply an engine, and then there's it's just a touch screen. You utilize a, a tablet device of some sort or multiple tablets to control the, the device. And are those typically Wi-Fi or Bluetooth connected? Um, the UI 16 is Wi-Fi connected. Okay. Um, uh, actually, I, all of them are Wi-Fi. A lot of yeah. them are built in Wi-Fi routers, or you can go IP just over the network. Sure, sure. Okay. Wow. Wow. So, uh, you it seemed like here at this at this show, uh, podcasting was uh, was highlighted quite a bit. What did you learn of anything or connect with people about podcasting? I found out there's a lot of companies that think they can monetize podcasting, um, and it's a big playing field out there. Um, mm. it, it's I'm curious to see what happens over the next several years. Uh, in my, this is my opinion right now today. Doesn't mean it can't change tomorrow. I feel that broadcasting, as you and I see it, terrestrial broadcasting, is the centrifuge of a larger multimedia device or company. Yeah. So broadcasters have this huge capability right now of utilizing their terrestrial signal to promote all these other things. Go to our website. We'll give you the city council information. Go to our website. We'll give you a stream of local sports. Go to our website. We'll give you secondary or third streams of a related music type we might we think you might like and sell all those as sponsorships. Go to our website, and now we have those individual types chopped down as a podcast or a vodcast. And I think that's where we need to be thinking. Now, I think individual podcasters that just go put on a show, uh, okay, but how are you going to build audience? And that's where terrestrial broadcasting has the advantage. People still listen. They're, they're involved. But now we can break that up into all these subgenres, and, and it's, it's really a uh, secondary market we're able to build where a lot of these folks say, well, I have an idea. I'm going to do a podcast on horses. Okay. What are you going to do to market that? And that's where the challenge comes uh, in because there may be yeah. a thousand more people doing that same <clears throat> podcast. And so inevitably you're sharing that same audience. And, right. and so that's where I see the challenge in podcasting. But there's other people like uh, professional wrestlers right now that is huge podcasts, 30, 40,000 streamers every show. And they're able to monetize that. So um, podcasting is, is, but even in that genre, you know, there's a, 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 a wrestling podcast on this network we're on, on the GFQ network called Matt Men. It's probably and, huge. Yeah, it is huge. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's so. a big one right now. In fact, I saw a list and it said of uh, all the podcasts, that was the hot topic that uh, is uh, it's wrestling. Deal. We could so, wrestle. Maybe our ratings <laughs> go up. <laughs> Chris, you up for it? Wrestling? How about how about Sure, sure. How about we We'll, yeah. we'll, we'll contact uh, Andrew. We'll get we'll get a, a location, a ring and we'll go for it. Maybe we should have Paul and uh, and Brittany uh, mud wrestle at the as we close out the show. What do you think? Ooh. Well, that's interesting. <laughs> no promises. Hey, Steve. Uh, all right. Well, uh, we tag team, and I'm getting Doctor Sabobuck. <laughs> oh gosh, he take you down. Uh, yeah, he take yeah he take us down. Yeah, Doctor Sabobuck right would take us down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did you did you, you know I'm, I had a quick tour around the, the place here. Uh, did you did you see anything like oh wow that's kind of a neat idea? People usually don't introduce new products at this show. Uh, I, you know, again, I <clears throat> this show is is interesting because you see a lot of the traditional broadcasters, uh, broadcast equipment suppliers here, and you see a lot of software suppliers. Really what stood out to me is, again, going back to podcasting. You go down the whole row. Everybody is trying to monetize podcasting. Also, I think we're seeing more growth in in just analytics platforms. Oh. Um, there are a couple yeah. of companies out that, that offered services that would track – analytics based on running a, a particular spot. So you run spot A one day for advertiser number one, the next day you run a completely different spot. And based on uh, geo tracking and web traffic, they they were able to decipher which had a better impact. Um, so we, I think people are starting to think outside the box and starting to reach a little further than just basic web traffic coming in. That's kind of exciting. And I really think this show is um, often sales and management driven. So you see a lot more of those software platforms that are out there, but there's still enough for everybody else that, that attends the show to get involved in it on the hardware side. Uh, who was broadcasting live from a big booth down there? Was that uh, Bob and Tom? Bob and Tom and okay. Tino Cochino. Oh, okay. Yeah, All right. Tino Cochino. They're yeah. kind of big out here in the Southwest. Yeah. Kind of wow. Rhythmic. So next year, this show is in Nashville. Oh, I'll be there. You'll okay. be there? Yeah, I'll be there. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll be sleep there. in my own bed. <laughs> Won't have a hotel bill. It's been a few years since it's been in Nashville. What, four years? It, it has, but they had a good time in Nashville. And I, I've heard that they're going to be in Nashville every other year now. Oh, wow. And then somewhere else on, on the odd years. So. It, it's, uh, I like Nashville. The food's <clears> good. 
the growth is wonderful there. Oh, you guys are just exploding with growth. Yeah. And and just the heritage, the music heritage out there is quite something. And if you haven't been there, you know, you may have missed this year. But if you get a chance, go next year because not only will you get the broadcast side of things, but you also just get all that music heritage. You go to the Grand Ole Opry, yeah. you go all over. And, and I just love soaking that history in. So much fun. That Johnny Cash Museum is, uh, is pretty cool. You know, I went under the Grand Ole Opry stage. And uh-huh. I, I had a little broomstick I found, and I started bumping it, and I started yelling things like, yeah, I'm Johnny Cash, and I'm stuck under here. <laughs> They quieted the whole tour. <laughs> I said it's called full quieting. <laughs> That's hilarious. Oh, hey, coming up uh, in our next segment, did you get to sit, sit in those cars over there? I did. The Xperia uh, cars. Yeah, uh, did HD. You, did you sit in the fancy smancy car? Yeah, you know, there's a story Is about that those the Audi? cars. No, that's a Fisher. You know, that a Fisher. Oh, that it was a uh, an electric car, which it's the same model that Justin Bieber got pulled over in when he had his Chrome wrap thing. Ooh. You remember, if you remember that, no. he got pulled over in his vehicle was wrapped in chrome. chrome. Anyway, you can find it on the internet when he was younger. Um, that vehicle model actually didn't take off because um, its performance was something like zero to sixteen eleven seconds. Oh. Yeah, but it looks really cool. It looks cool. Well, the, the other car is a Toyota Avalon uh, stock, but we're going to show you, the reason I'm mentioning this, and I asked if you were in those, um, in the next segment coming up, we're going to be, uh, we just recorded this morning, we're going to be talking to Dave Collisar, all digital AM radio, all That's digital, cool. no analog at all. Oh my God, what about all my analog listeners? Well, we have some answers for that, and you might be interested to find out. So that's coming up in just a few minutes on This Week in Radio Tech. Uh, hang on. we got a commercial break right now. We'll be right back, and we'll come back from the Xperi Toyota Avalon. Type R is CalRec's first native IP-based mixing console. It is fully AES67 and NMOS ISO4 and ISO5 compatible, as defined by SMPTE 2110. Connectivity via CAT5e utilizing COT switches and power to the surface is supplied via standard PoE switches to minimize cabling. Its 2U core has integrated I.O., so you're instantly up and running, and it can power up to three independent mixing environments, each with their own separate DSP resources. Type R's surface is modular and expandable, consisting of three slimline panels, each of which are user-definable with layouts saved and recalled quickly between shows. It's available in four DSP packs, and as your station grows, larger packs can be added, making Type R the most flexible radio console you can buy. Find out more at calrec.com slash twerk. Thanks so much to Calrec for sponsoring this week in Radio Tech. Hey, it's Kirk Harnack live at um, the NAB 2019, the radio show in Dallas, Texas. And I want to tell you about these beautiful adapters, these cables. Here's the six-foot version. Uh, You may have known these all your life as Studio Hub. They go from XLR, male or female, or quarter-inch, or even eighth-inch, or even RCA connectors, or bare wires. And they take these audio cables and go into RJ45 connectors. And, you know, most of us are familiar with this by now. First time I saw that, I said, what? And you know what? These are gold-plated connectors. Uh, every time, they, if they wiggle a little bit, they actually get cleaner. So uh, they don't tend to get noisy over time at all. Well, if you've been following this, if you've tried to buy some Studio Hub brand adapters or cables lately, you may have been told, oh, they closed their doors. They're out of business. Well, here's the good news. Angry Audio at angryaudio.com is making the exact same connectors and adapter cables. And when I say the exact same ones, they're made in the same factory by the same people on the same equipment. So it's the same thing that you've been used to for years. It doesn't say Studio Hub on it. They say Angry Audio. Uh, They got a whole website. There you go. There's the website. If you're looking at the video here, go to angryaudio.com. And you can uh, click on the on the cables or adapters and see all the different ones that are available. Here's good news. You know, oftentimes when one company buys another company or merges with another, the prices go up. Uh-uh. Completely opposite. The prices have come down. They've come down by about 25%. That's right. These adapter cables are now about 25% less at list price than they used to be. Good news for us who are trying to build a station on a budget. And here's another cool deal. Uh, while supplies last, if you buy this style, that is with the female RJ45 connector, and then whatever terminated with, you buy these, you buy one of these, you get a free seven-foot 
uh, patch cable, an RJ45 male-to-male patch cable. Uh, just talk to your dealer about that. You can certainly call Broadcasters General Store, or you can call other dealers who uh, who have sold the Studio Hub brand. They should have Angry Audio available. Go to the website, too, angryaudio.com, and uh, I think you'll be glad you did. I'm so glad Angry Audio is continuing this important... To me, it's very important. Chris Tobin, what do you think? Important that somebody makes these these fantastic uh, adapter cables? Absolutely. Absolutely. People don't realize the convenience. You know, some, I, I remember years ago, some people were like, ah, it's, you know, it's a cheesy way to do it. It's bulky. It takes up too much room. The reality is if you plan it properly and you're smart about your cable management, they're ideal. All right. You know, Dan Braverman's in, you know, introduction of the, the concept is definitely will continue on for a long time. And, you know, Angry Audio taking on the torch, if you will, and carrying through. It, it, there's no reason not to think that this is a perfect way to get your studio built on a budget. You know, it, no matter what, it doesn't matter. I mean, even if you do outside broadcasts for a living, they're the most convenient way to do stuff. I've done a lot of OBs. And I'll tell you, it's been very convenient being able to pop the connector off the end of a Cat5 cable and change it to a different sex and throw it in and, and get going. So it's much quicker than some of the other methods you can have. And to get, and to get them at 25% off the old prices, uh, yeah, that's a good thing, too. So oh, that's even check them out, yeah. Angry, <laughs> angryaudio.com. So, Chris, uh, to, this morning I had a chance to sit down in a beautiful Toyota Avalon. And my dad used to own a Toyota Avalon. And it was, it was nice. It was okay. This ain't your dad's Toyota Avalon. This thing is really, really tricked out. It's beautiful. Um, and it's got an off-the-shelf you know, HD entertainment system in it, HD radio, plus uh, other, you know, it's got Sirius XM and all that in it. And to my knowledge, every, uh, every HD radio that has been sold, if it had AM in it, it would do AM HD. It will also do the all-digital mode of am hd so no analog carrier it's all digital and that means well tell you what rather than me tell about it uh chris i got to sit in the car with dave colisar the director of engineering or the chief engineer at uh, ww uh fp something like that anyway we'll find out in just a second also um uh well russ munchank was in the car with us too let's roll that tape and see what we had to say You wouldn't believe where I am. I'm enjoying the smell of new leather. I'm in a new car. This is a uh, Toyota Avalon? Yes. Yeah, Toyota Avalon. Uh, and we are experiencing all digital AM radio. Pretty amazing. And guess what? I'm here with the chief engineer for this all digital AM station, Dave Colasar. Hi, Dave. Welcome in. Hi. Thanks for having me. So uh, here we are in this beautiful car, and we've got an amazing entertainment system here. What are we looking at? Uh, we are looking at uh, the first, the one and only, yeah. all digital AM radio station in the United States. No analog. No analog. Okay. We turned off our analog, okay. and uh, we replaced it with an HD radio digital only signal. So what we're hearing now and what we're seeing it, it, we're, we're hearing stereo audio yep. on AM with frequency response of out to 15 kilohertz. And we're also seeing uh, title, artist, and uh, album metadata, plus a station logo and album artwork. And now, this is AM. Now, as I recall, when, when HD first came along and AM stations could do it, uh, they had to narrow their analog bandwidth, and they didn't get a whole lot of bits to deal with to transmit the uh, the audio in HD. But this is different now. There's no analog carrier involved. Right. We've turned off the analog, which frees up the bandwidth to gotcha. transmit yeah. to put all the all the we, we use all the bandwidth and we use all the power. Oh, all the power. Uh, so okay. now the okay. range is much better too. The range is just as good, if not better, than your analog coverage. So with the hybrid AM uh, HD, we didn't have the, the, the metadata that we had now, or uh, what? We would have uh, title and artist oh. data, but we did not have uh, images, and uh, in most cases, we didn't have stereo audio either. Oh, yeah, okay. So this is stereo with album art or uh, logos? Uh, yes, yeah, so this looks just like every other service in the dashboard. This looks like FM HD, it looks like uh, satellite, it looks like internet streaming. This just looks like all the other services. So this has achieved RO and visual parity with all the other services in, in the dashboard. In fact, on this uh, car radio we're looking at, uh, there's no differenti differentiation between AM and FM on the uh, radio buttons. Uh, correct. I think a, a, a trend in receiver design is to tune by thumbnail icons. 
And so you see, in our case, our station is called the Gamut. Yeah. You see a Gamut logo pop up on your screen and you press the button and it's not obvious that you're listening to AM or FM. Yeah, yeah. It just, so, it just sounds good. It just sounds good. We're going to talk a little bit of the technical stuff, the power and uh, processing and things like that in a minute. Russ Munchank is in the car with us too. Russ, come on. I'm the backseat driver. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, Russ, turning off the AM carrier, you lose yeah. all the all the traditional AM analog radios. But yes. how's the penetration of uh, HD now in, in cars? The penetration in cars in most of the major markets is about 25%. That's of all vehicles. Not Okay, so new ones is about what? New ones off the line, yeah. over 50%. And with attrition, that just keeps growing with the cars on the road. Absolutely. Wow. So, uh, wow. That's, so, yeah, you're, okay. Okay, so are you getting enough listeners uh, yeah. to this to, to make it count on the meter a little bit? Oh, yeah, yeah, so, the, right, exactly. So, as the program, I'm also the program director of this oh my station. Gosh. So Engineer every, and program that's director, right. every, every engineer's dream. Right? Everybody's got to have a hobby. Don't ever <laughs> give up your hobby. Um, so, as the program director of this adult album alternative station on AM, uh, I would rather take my chances with that 25% than with the 100% who could hear it on analog AM but would refuse to tune in because of quality. Oh, and, and so many people don't even push that AM button uh, right. on the radio. But now, in, yeah. in the last book, in the Frederick ratings, in the Frederick, Maryland ratings, which is the market for this station, okay. um, for the first time in about 10 years, this station has shown up in the ratings. Oh, my goodness. As so all digital stations. So you'd rather have a percentage of a smaller number of people who will listen. Is there's no differentiation, AM or FM? Yes, especially with the format that we're running. Wow. This uh, opens up a whole new uh, possibilities of formats for AM radio. Now we're actually we're listening to audio here, but we're listening to the radio. What decoding actual recorded RF? Yeah, we, we, we made an RF recording of WWFD okay. back in Frederick, right. and we're playing it back into a transmitter. So we're getting an exact duplicate of what was transmitted, I don't know, last week. Yeah, you okay. know, you know. So we're listening to the station as you would experience it in the DC area. And so how do you, um, how do you audio process this if there's no asymmetry for analog AM? What, what are you doing? Well, uh, right now we're using an Omnia 7 oh. AM and HD processor, okay. and we're using, we, we, we Threw away the AM output, and we're using the HD output uh, to feed the uh, to feed the transmitter. So the the asymmetrical electrons are just falling on the floor yep, in the back of the transmitter. Falling on the floor, okay. that's right. But, but the HD is processed what like a stream would be. Like a stream would be, yeah. Okay. Uh, in fact, uh, you could probably use uh, a, a streaming processor uh, for AM HD. So uh, what what has to be done to the importer exporter exciter that kind of things to make all digital AM? Well, it's it's flipping a switch in the software, oh, okay. um, and uh, you know the 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 work is making sure that your antenna can pass digital, yeah. and uh, and if your transmitter can pass the hybrid mode of HD, then chances are there's a good chance of doing the all digital mode as yeah, well. Yeah, because closer to the carrier is usually easier anyway. Uh, right, yeah. right, right. Okay. okay. Wow. Hey, we got to go soon. Uh, Russ Munchak, I wonder if you might, if, this is intriguing. I don't know how many people, you know, this is an experimental sort of thing, but it, on the other hand, it's it's a real radio station with real numbers. That's right. It, it has ratings. Ratings. Wow. So if people <laughs> want to find out more about all digital AM radio, how do they do that, Russ? Well, that would be Xperi's website, which is www.xperi, that's X-P-E-R-I dot com. Wow. And the number of cars growing makes this uh, looking more viable as time goes on. Oh, very, very much so. There's been a uh, petition for rulemaking uh, with the FCC to uh, enable this uh, as a non-experimental mode, and we're very excited about it. I wish we had more time. We ought to have uh, have each of you guys on the show for a full hour sometime. A absolutely. Sure. And if I may be allowed, I'll give you the website for yes. the station Please too. Sure. So if yeah. you would, if you'd like to hear what's on this station, go to thegamut.fm. Thegamut.fm. Even though it's on AM. That's right. Okay. Hey, we got to run. I'm Kirk Harnack for This Week in Radio Tech. And we're back live on the show floor of the 2019 NAB Radio Show in Dallas, Texas. Hey there, friends. Uh, and I'm standing here with a couple of my favorite people, Greg Dahl, who works with us at the Telos Alliance. Hi, how you doing? Oh, Glad you're here. You're here. I got, can you hear yourself? I can hear myself. You really, just know I don't like doing this. Really well. Yeah, but you're so good at it. Oh, sure, sure. <laughs> and John Lackness. Hi, John. Good to see you. How long have I known you? Oh, Forever? my gosh. It's been, it's been years, Kirk. 
I, uh, we've, goes back a long time. We've both been through a lot of life, haven't we? Yes, we have. <laughs> but we kind of we kind of return like a bad boomerang. <laughs> well, let me get to John first for a second. Yep. So you're working at this uh, this new company that's two companies together. Actually, yeah, it, it's wonderful. The Elnos Group, as you are aware, bought uh, Broadcast Electronics uh, several months ago. Yeah. And it has been a for me. It's a it's a homecoming because I used to work for Marty back in the early two th- late nineties, early two thousands. Yeah. Uh, went away, did some other things, and now they approached me, and I came back, and now I'm working for uh, the Elnos Group and Broadcast Electronics, and I'm a really and I've, I've told several people this. This is probably the best career move I have made. Uh, the company is seeing a resurgence. It's being rebuilt. We have w- new products that are coming up. Um, well, some of them I can't talk about. But, <laughs> of course but not. We'll be, but we'll be coming, <laughs> coming in. Out. But there's, yeah. there's some wonderful things that are happening. The sales have been very, very good. And I'm happy with being there. Uh, and I'm seeing a lot of good positive things coming out of it. So I'm really looking at this as they're calling it the new beginning uh, of the company. It's great. I'll, I'll give a 20 second testimonial. Um, you know, I, my business partner is a guy named Larry Fuss. Right. And to when we improve a station here or there, or put something on the air, you know, I got to deal with whatever Larry buys. Whatever he buys is what. I, and you know, <laughs> he's bought a number of, of your competitors, not right. tells. We got right. a number of those in our stations. But the and we're most, all friends. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And the most recent transfer he bought though was an Elanos five kilowatt. Right. In this much space, right. of course, it's this deep. You know, but. It, and it was a wonderful experience putting that in. It, it's, a, it's a very easy experience for, for the engineer to buy something and be able to put it in all frequency agile so you don't have to worry about it, yeah. a bunch of things, uh, yeah. SNMP and web and that. It's, it's an easy project. Yeah. And it's it's on the air right now. Say it right. sounded good. And we got so. them in stock. So that's oh, great. good. Okay. That's always awesome. a good thing. Good yeah. deal. Yeah. John, Johnny, you can see him. We'll talk to you hey, more John. later. Okay. Okay. Greg Dahl is with us. John, you can take that uh, headset off if I you shall. like. There we go. See which one is it? There we go. Uh, Greg Dahl, uh, your company, Greg, is Second Opinion what? Communications. Second. And how, why did you pick that name, for Second uh, Opinion? Well, you know, we have to register with the state. Yeah. And we kept on submitting names, and they kept on being rejected. Oh. So we finally got to up in somewhere 14, 15, and we figured a lot of times when uh, – we're approached by somebody. They've already talked to somebody. Oh. They've got their first opinion. So yeah. the second opinion, that's where it came from. <laughs> that's great. Yes. Yeah. Oh, wow. So uh, so Greg Dahl's the best engineer in Illinois was already taken. Is that is that why you got <laughs> You know, I forgot that one. <laughs> Dang. Should have put that in there. So you uh, tend to do a lot of projects with the telephones uh, where you in- install and configure uh, big systems of audio, what, audio consoles and such? Right. A lot of times with the configuration, commissioning, training with the clients with BGS, we bring in the, the TELUS Alliance equipment and such. And because of the IP networking, as you know, it, it takes a little bit to get a kickstart to understand what it takes to have. And, you know, I'm not as well-spoken as John Lackness, uh, so I'm stumbling a little bit. But it takes a little bit to uh, get that going and see what the foundation is. And if your foundation is not right, we know we have problems and we have to go back and fix them. So if we get it right the first time, then the client is much happier and they have a product that just runs smoothly and uh, we're all happy in broadcasting. You and I have a number of things in common. One of them is our love for broadcasting, engineering, right. understanding systems, figuring out the best way to do things. Right. But another one, uh, you're blaming me, me now for yes. this, uh, this, uh, this new addiction you have. Yes, right. What fault. would that be? <laughs> Well, let, let's explain how this happened first. Okay. See, last month we were in Omaha yeah. for the Broadcast Association's uh, some that, meeting, n- meeting. Yeah, Nebraska, the conference. What the yeah. Numer- yeah, that's right. And you and I and Mary Chanelli were at dinner. Yeah. And it was about, if I remember right, about 8, 10 in the evening. And all of a sudden you said, we got to go. The sun's going to go down. We got to exactly. go. Exactly. Yeah. So we didn't know what you were talking about. You mentioned something, and we go running out to a tower. You said, I got this tower we want to go to. I think we're telling Mary, because we didn't Mary's car. Drive faster, drive yeah, faster. Exactly. Sun's going. Uh, turn this exit right here. I bet right. it's down on that road. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So we get to the tower, and you pull out this drone. Yeah. Now, I've seen drones, but I've never been right there, Right. you know, in the workings of it. And you just, whoo, and it goes up there. And all of a sudden, you're at the top of the tower, and you're yeah, looking at I, it. Yeah, within a minute and a half, top of the tower. It's fast. Yeah. And it was just watching it and observing <laughs> it, and I just like, wow, that looks like fun. You know, and plus, maybe you can make a little money doing it. Yeah. So I go, went ahead and purchased one. I've been learning to fly it. I still have to get my certification. Right. Because right now, I'm considered a hobbyist. But the next part is to do tower inspections. You know, I've, I've gone to a, t- a couple towers, and... 
you know, if you want to call them, map them, but video recorded them. And sure. you can see all kinds of stuff you cannot see from the ground. Especially if you've got coax uh, that's off a butterfly clamp and flapping in the exactly. breeze. You can see that on that tower we that we uh, video uh, that we went up and down and made a video of. I saw either a rope or a, a cable hanging on. On a right. of the ERI bays, you know, tower crew lost something and forgot to get it on the way down or something. I don't mm-hmm. know, but I now let the people who own the FM antenna know, hey, there's a little something hanging off one of your bays. Which I think once you posted that, yeah, the owner there, Mark, yeah, of course, he spoke up and said, hey, that's my antenna. <laughs> yes, that's right. And at the time, I didn't know it was Mark's antenna. That's right. Yeah, we did not yeah. know. Yeah, we didn't know whose we were, antenna it was. We were taking a chance, and we were just <clears> hoping <throat> nobody came up and try to kick us, you know, off the property. <laughs> right. There was a vehicle that came up and we we're going, oh, who's that coming? Because it was getting a little dark, you yeah. know? Yeah. Yeah. So it was fun. It was fun. So uh, earlier in the show, I had the chance to speak with uh, Gary Cavell and Cindy. Gary mm-hmm. and Cindy Cavell. And, you know, they do um, uh, field measurements with drones. And right. there's a whole art and science to that. It's not all cut and dry. There's right. there's there's a lot of factors to worry about. But one thing that, that the Cavells are happy to train people like you and me to do, and you know, I got full time jobs. I, you, you're the guy Mine's doing this. I got a full time <clears> job. <throat> they, um, uh, and that is about infrared photography yeah. of the transmission lines right. to see if if there's something heating up. Chris Tobin, you may have uh, experienced some of this yourself, but Gary Cavell did a presentation here. I missed the presentation, but he went back and showed me the slides that he showed, and they showed um, a 90 degree elbow on a tower that was much warmer than everything else. Uh-huh. He said, show that to the owners, the chief engineers. They said, you've got to replace this right away. They did. And you know what? I'll bet they saved themselves tens of thousands of dollars in soot-filled transmission lines. Just the repairs, but not even counting the off-air time. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, Chris, have you ever gotten to do any work or seen the results of infrared photography from a drone on a tower? Uh, from a drone on a tower, no, but from a drone on a camera in the transmitter room, yes. Uh, recently, oh, yeah, I sure. just did some work. Yep, just did some work on a TV station whose uh, 90 degree elbow at the tower base was uh, overheating. And they discovered it when they noticed some water steaming off the top of it after a rain shower. Like, that's not normal. <laughs> oh. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, <no>. yeah. So, <laughs> so they immediately contacted somebody on staff that was able to bring in an infrared and they started uh, checking out everything. And sure enough, 90 degree elbow had a problem. The bullet inside. Well, Chris, we're going to have uh, Gary and Cindy Cavell on a future uh, show of This Week in Radio Tech. And Gary said he'd be glad to share. You know, there's some things are, are you know, engineering proprietary information uh, that different engineering oh, groups sure. have. And Cavell is no different. Uh, but he said the infrared photography, he's happy to share some techniques and ideas with that. So I hope to learn something then. You can watch the show. You can learn something, too. Oh, yes, definitely. <clears throat> yeah. And and uh, and I don't know how much that stuff costs. Somebody said, well, I'm just going to take a uh, an infrared uh, camera camera and and tape it to the top of my uh, phone okay i said that didn't <laughs> yeah, I? Yeah. was that he said in front of me yeah i did i said there's the cheaper right a yeah. blur one with the cell, old cell phone and you're the one that said make sure you tape it so it doesn't fall off yeah. because i didn't think about that at well, first yeah, well the thing that plugs on the fur right. yeah because it's only the yeah. usb c that holds that yeah place, something yeah. like that right yeah okay right yeah use, use lots of lots of tape i'm not sure what what kind of tape would be best to hold the whole camera Uh-oh. onto that I duct tape is kind duct of tape, universal. That's right. that's universal. Right. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so what, what's what has been? Uh, you, you've been involved with a few bigger projects lately because we met at one in Omaha. Mm-hmm. And tell me, you know, for engineers out there who are thinking about an audio over IP system, you know, hey, look, we've had this uh, analog and this AES stuff uh, for a long time. Right. Time we finally went to AOIP, but gosh, I really don't know much, that much about it. Uh, when when is it a good idea to bring up somebody like you into the picture? Well, most times it's best to go to Broadcaster General Store. I'll be brought in to help there. You know, uh-huh. I'm trying okay. to uh, close that gap of understanding by providing a drawing of the equipment they're looking to purchase and how that would interconnect. And if the physical part, once they get the physical part connected, the configuration, commissioning, and training, when I show up for a few days, goes very smoothly, quickly. And by the time we finish, they understand better what they need to do. And it also helps on the support side because now they're not calling and said, well, what do I do now? So it's very helpful in that way. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Makes sense. Makes sense. All right. Hey, uh, uh, Chris, I'm sorry you're not out here this year. Uh, next year, it's in Nashville. The radio show's in Nashville. So, Chris, I got a spare bedroom. But, buddy, cool. you, can come, you can come stay at the Harnack Arms. 
if you're coming I will definitely Nashville. be. A, I will be making a reservation at the Harmac Arns uh, very quickly. Absolutely, Nashville <laughs> okay. is on. Is on the calendar. Yes, absolutely. And suppo- supposedly they're going to have it in Nashville every other year, and uh, alternate. You know, you know, go around to some other cities on on the odd, odd years. So that's supposedly what what they're doing. Uh, well, maybe they'll come Chris, to <laughs> uh, well, I doubt and, it. Well, there is something coming up in New York uh, soon. NAB and well, not. Yeah, it's an NAB New York and AES, right? Yes, that's coming up yeah. in three weeks. Yeah, I think it's three weeks. I just found out yesterday, Chris, that I'm going to be in New York for the AES. Didn't know that till Excellent. yesterday. Excellent. So we'll have to do a show. Wait a minute, I'll be there on the Thursday. What? what shall we do Rattle and Hum again? Rattle and Hum is no longer there, but we can find another location. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. What? Were they not making enough money on the? On oh the, wait a minute. You know what? The west side... No, the west one may still be there. The east is gone. But the west may still be there. I'll check. I'll have to check. Okay. Well, and maybe there's a, a better venue, too. Maybe we'll just all pile in the uh, subway and go over to uh, Andrews Arian's house. Well, we could do that. There's, there's a place nearby that's definitely worth uh, worth the trip. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All but, right. Aren't you going to be somewhere else just before that? that yeah. That week? Madison. I'm flying. Yeah. In fact, my flight, I'm flying... Not from Madison back, though, with the Broadcasters Clinic and the SBE National Meeting and the yes. new officers and all that stuff. Uh, I changed the flight. I got to fly from Madison over to uh, New York City. New York City, yes. Yeah. It wouldn't be fair if I didn't say something about since I'm on the committee for the Broadcasters Clinic. And yes. Yeah, we're, we'll I'm, be running that same time. Unfortunately, I hope in futures we're not conflicted <clears> in the same time, but... And in yeah. fact, because of the schedule of uh, the Broadcasters Clinic, and I wanted to do the podcast from there live, we're actually going to do Twert that week on the, I think on the Tuesday. Okay. Yeah. We're doing Twert live on the Tuesday. We'll announce it, what time it's going to be on, <laughs> so you can you can join us here. Uh, hey, tell you what, Chris, why don't we take a, our, our final quick break, and when we come back, we'll get our tips of the week from everybody that has one, all right? We'll be right back Excellent. after this word from Lavo. There has probably never been a better time in history to buy a new radio mixing console. Today's consoles are more sophisticated than ever, with more features and functions than you can shake a stick at. But have you noticed how complicated they are? There's a sea of knobs and switches and displays and buttons. Some of them look like you might need a pilot's license to do your show. Well, a board doesn't have to be complicated to be powerful. Just look at the new Ruby mixing surface from Lavo. The first thing you notice is how smooth and streamlined it is. Ruby has lots of cool tech, but what it doesn't have is that confusing ocean of buttons that clutter things up. Now, we all know that there are some console features that Jock only uses once in a while. So why dedicate controls to them? Ruby fixes this problem by moving those once-in-a-blue-moon controls to a touch-sensitive, customizable GUI that happily shares screen space with your other studio software, helping you fight control room clutter. Thanks to this design innovation, talent that use Ruby produce smoother shows with less errors. Controls that are used the most fall naturally to hand, while functions that rarely need adjustment are easily controlled with just a couple of clicks in the context-sensitive GUI. And Ruby has cool features you won't find on other boards, like AutoMix, an intelligent gain writing function that guarantees the perfect mix for multi-mic morning shows and call-in segments, dual-mode snapshots that instantly switch the motorized faders between on-air and production modes, and enough DSP and I.O. options to make even your pro sound pals green with envy. And because quality is as important to Lavo as it is to you, every console is proudly built to fanatically precise standards at Lavo's own factory in Germany. If you're ready to declutter your control room, do yourself a favor. Check out the new Ruby and the other cool Lavo radio tech at www.lawo.com slash twert. And thanks a lot to Lavo for sponsoring this week in Radio Tech. Check out the website, lavo.com slash twert. It'll take you right to the radio products. And welcome back to our final segment of this week in Radio Tech. This is our tip of the week segment. Chris, I ask you to hold on for just a minute because we got joined here by Jeff Williams. Hi, Jeff. Nice seeing you, Kirk. Good to see you. You, I often see Yellow Tech in the same booth here with Broadcaster General Store. And um, you guys are, are have joined the family, the uh, the. Axia Livewire family. We are part of the Livewire family. We do support Livewire Plus with our Intellimix small mixer. That's a cool little mixer. That is a cool little mixer. But the other thing, too, is we speak other languages, too. So we're part of other families. Yeah. So we speak Dante. Yep. We speak Ravenna. Yep. And uh, AS67 all at the same time. Wow. 
That's just that's awesome. And that's so that means that people can buy the things they like and hook them together and they put them in the toss. Yeah, yeah, we have a setup software that allows you to say this is a Ravenna source, this is a Livewire source, yes. a Dante source. You can really uh, speak all those languages all at once. And with, with Dante also uh, uh, moving to easier AES67 connectivity, then even if uh, a product doesn't necessarily speak Dante, but it does speak AES67, there's a connectivity that is correct, too. Possibility right there. Yeah. Uh, you didn't happen to have a tip of the week for our, our listeners, did you? My one little tip of the week is for the usual Yellow Tech mic arm oh, yeah. user. And it's amazing. We do attach a little manual on every mic arm. Right. And, you know, we're busy. I know engineers are busy people, and that, that little manual gets clipped off into the world. But a lot of people don't realize that there's an actual adjustment of the microphone's tension, the arm's tension. So based on the weight of the microphone. So on the bottom of the arm, there's an actual screw underneath. That is you can, that where that is? That is exactly Don't where do what at. Kirk Harnack did and take the side of the arm off because a thousand springs will pop out and you'll never get them back. That's right. That's not how you do it, is it? No, that's not <laughs> okay. how you do it. So what you do is you get your microphone. Yeah. You loosen all the joints yeah. You know, on the outside of the arm. Yeah. And on the bottom, you adjust that screw to where that mic so moves the weight, naturally. The weight is the right weight. It's the right weight. And then guess what? Think of that little screw in the bottom as the macro adjustment and yeah. the little side ones is micro adjustment. Oh, okay, that makes sense. So that is my number one thing that I mentioned to every new Yellow Tech owner. Well, all the cool kids have his mic arms. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Speaking of cool kids, Paul, do you have, you know, you're in audio processing and I know you go to stations and you see uh, things that probably make you shake your head with regard to audio processing. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you see really good stuff. They just need a little extra tweak. You know, mm -hmm. I would imagine every now and then you learn something from the way they've got it set up. Probably yeah. not very often. <laughs> uh, I, you know, depending on, sometimes that's format dependent. A lot yeah. of times you'll go to a different market and see how they have their AC station set up or or maybe a country format or, hey, I never you know thought about that. So based or, on your uh, recent experience, stations you've been visiting, uh, what would be a tip of the week? What are you saying that people could maybe pay a little attention to or hadn't realized that they should? Uh, I still come back around to the watermark. So the thing that I still have a lot of talks with engineers and sometimes program directors about is the effectiveness of their watermark and um, using insert points and audio processors. Yeah. So, I, you know, I um, if you hear Voltaire, a lot of ringing, if you switch to an insert point, a lot of that ringing goes away. You can, right. you can make your right. station sound better by going with insert points. Right. So a, a product like the Voltaire, kind of falsely creates opportunities for encoding. Whereas if you go to an insert point on an audio processor, you've got the audio naturally lifted and there are natu more natural insert, natural encoding points mm -hmm. for the PPM encoder. The fun and, to stick itself in. Right. And and those will be properly masked. And, and I bring this up because we're here in a major market like Dallas, Texas, and it's just yeah. something that I heard driving yeah. over uh, here. Yeah. The, you know, I'm just saying. It. And I know we're, they're talking to a small part of the audience, but the science behind all that is fascinating. We've had podcasts about it. And, well, and and w what's in your hand here? Because we're at the radio show. What is that? I brought a radio with me. A radio. So I've, been, yeah, a radio. I've, I've been feeding our TVC 1.5 uh, ratings watermark encoder with this radio. How about that? Which is, yeah, just this little handheld radio. And you know what? It's time to go. The show's over, everybody. Well, but, but Chris, but Chris has Chris always has a tip. Chris, can you wrap us up with a tip of the week? Certainly. <laughs> well, the tip of the week is that recently just had a situation in a transmitter room uh, atop of a very tall building, and it turns out that there was no phone service up there for some reason, and we realized, well, that's not a good thing. So I would suggest, and I do this at my site, and I actually travel with a small VoIP phone but from my friend's uh, business engineering office that I would do work with. So I travel with a VoIP phone, plug it into an internet connection anywhere I go, Max Connect, connect uh, included, and I now have connectivity to the office and making phone calls. Transmitter sites, if you don't pay for a local dial tone, which is very possible because how often do you need it up there, put in an ATA, okay, an audio terminal adapter and um, for, your, for a VoIP phone, for a regular phone that you can convert, or get a VoIP service, or if you have VoIP service, get a phone on your, your service dedicated for the use at the transmitter or for you to travel with. That's my tip. Uh. Get a VoIP, or just do it. On your, you could, and you can also do like a friend of mine said. Well, I have it on my smartphone. Why do I have to bother with a physical phone? Well, maybe a, smart, a smartphone need, is needed for something else. Where at the site, like taking pictures or doing other things, having a physical phone available just to work with on speaker, hands free, may come in handy. I'm just saying. Well, and what you just said about about a lot of times you're up in a tall, tall building, and 
the carousel carriers may have redirected some things now, but for years, if you would um, if you would go to a uh, a tall building, you would have no cell service. That means you had no data service, and that means the VoIP application on your phone ain't gonna work either. But if you had a wired connection or you're on building Wi-Fi, then you've got a chance of having that VoIP. Well, that's, work. that's and why I, get, I point this out. The location I was at yeah, did not have yeah. cell service. <laughs> And, and I guess you're safety minded as you should be, and you want to be able to call somebody if there's pro- if there's trouble. Yes. Well, right? I was at two sites, two high power TV sites, and there was work going on. I was on the overnight. I usually, if I can't have two person team, I make sure I have a schedule of somebody to contact me and make sure they can. Uh, thankfully, in some areas, if I have to, I use two way radios, but uh, I do have a VoIP phone I travel with, and it comes in very handy. Cool. We are out of time. The show is closed. People are wrapping things up. And uh, Jeff, thank you for joining us. It's great to be here. Always good to see you. And good good to see the cool things that Yellow Tech makes. And I'm so glad you guys talked to Axia now. Oh, we do. We're fully Axia compliant. That is awesome. All right, we got to go. We're going to see you uh, next week. Our guest next week is the amazing Hank Landsberg of Henry Engineering. You've known him and loved him for years and years, and he's going to be on our show. So we hope you'll join us then. We'll see you next week. Oh, and thanks a lot to our producer, Suncast, and also to Andrew Zarian, the founder of the GFQ Network, home of lots of fine podcasts, including Matt Men, What the Tech, and many more. We'll see you next week on This Week in Radio Tech. Bye-bye.